My name is Stacy Sargent. I do leadership and team development, primarily in tech companies. But I have a passion for women leaders. It is enormous and in me. Here's what I want to tell you about today. Imposter syndrome and inner critics are nasty little buggers. They're those sounds inside your head, the voices inside your head that say things that paralyze you, that freak you out. Maybe when you just stood up to do some of these activities, you might have experienced one of those. They're insidious. I have them too. I'm just going to give away the ending here. You don't get over it. You learn how to manage it. And you can. That's what we're going to talk. I'm going to tell some stories. We're going to talk about it a little bit today. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. So on your table, there should be index cards. And if you don't have index, everybody take one. And if you don't have an index card, just grab a piece of paper. Okay, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Oh, I need a clicker. It's right, behind you on the table. it's right behind me on the table. Fantastic, thank you. Look, I had a great slide with an index card on it. Um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down the most recent inner critic message you told yourself. So for me, the most recent was, oh my gosh, she is so much better than I am. I am not a real speaker. So whatever you've told yourself most recently that had to relate to imposter syndrome, some sort of self-doubt or fear that you have, go ahead and write that down on the index card. First thing you thought of, if you're like, what, which one? I had like five a second ago. Pick one, doesn't matter. OK, if you're done, go ahead and wave it in the air. Let me know. OK, fantastic. Now I'm going to ask you to do something too. I'm going to ask you to pass your, hold on, don't do it yet. Overachievers in the room. You're going to pass your card to the right. You're going to get one. You're going to read it, and then you're going to pass it to the right again until it's made it all the way around. Ready, set, go. OK. There's a couple of tables with tons of people at them. God, you wish you were at that table. So let me ask you a question. How many of you, and I know you're going to say yes because I heard it, when I said you're going to pass them around and let others read them went, no, no. How many of you, anybody? Were, um, how many of you were horrified, like, what am I doing? I don't want to do this. OK, here's good comfort. I've made thousands of people do this activity. Usually, I make them stand up and walk around and try to meet everybody in the room, but this room's too big for that. What we hear often, not just often, every single time we've done this, are two things. One, I started out afraid, but as I read the cards, I thought, wow, I'm not alone. I thought it was just me, and it's not. The second thing we often hear is like, are you kidding? These women I'm sitting with, these women I've met are fantastic. How could they possibly think this about themselves? Anybody have that reaction? Just a quick show of hands. Yeah. Here's the point. This is a human condition. Self-doubt, imposter syndrome, any critics, everybody feels it. And uh, let me just answer one question I always get at women's events. Do men have inner critics? Yes. Yes, they do. Yeah, some gentlemen here being honest, <laughs> loud and proud. Here, here's the thing. Men are not socially allowed to talk about these publicly. Women, we get to talk in groups. We do. It's OK for us to talk about this. It's not for men. So when I'm talking to men, typically I hear it in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Or I sort of change the language, and I'll do it in a team dynamic, but I won't really tell them what I'm going after so they actually admit it. Um, don't tell them that. But it's a human condition. And the thing is, we just don't talk about it. Like Now you've realized everybody sitting around you feels this too. You're not alone. 
The other thing that happens is when we talk about it to the right people, it reduces the toxicity. Brené Brown says shame in a Petri dish will grow. Shame, when you put it out towards the light, can't grow. When you talk about it, and here's, this is our community. This is the place where we can do it. Not only can we share our imposter syndrome and our doubts, we can also share our successes. We'll get to that in a second. So I want to tell you a couple of stories, and they have within them a couple of tools that I've found are helpful with um, dealing with inner critics and imposter syndrome. Now, there's lots of stuff in the book. I'm not here trying to sell books. You can get free workshops. It's a free Kindle today. But I can only give you a couple tools in, in the, next, the amount of time I have. So the first one. Um, in grad school, uh, we were given the assignment to put together a training program or a, um, a facilitation of a workshop. We could pick anything in the topic of diversity. And I was like, yes, I love diversity. So I worked and worked and worked on it. PowerPoint version 16. <laughs> I had handouts. I made a game. It was stellar. Um, and then I delivered. And I have a fellow grad student here. Um, and it was okay. Now I'm a perfectionist. What does okay mean to me? <laughs> failure. Complete and total failure. Devastated. Oh my, God, oh my God, I'm a complete failure. Yes, I've done a startup. Yes, I'm spending Saturday at the Women in Cloud event. I'm pretty awesome. I'm a complete failure. My professor took me to the side and she said, what, why are you having this kind of reaction? I, I wanted to rock it. Why does it matter that you rocked it? Well, because, you know, diversity is an important thing. No, why does diversity matter? She asked me that question a few times. And finally, I answered from my heart versus my head. She said, Stace, why does this matter? And I said, you know, because I care so much about people feeling like they belong. It turns out it's one of my core values. I've been the woman in the room with all men teams. I've been the woman who feels like the only larger size woman. I have been the woman who feels like the only one on the playground. And all I want is for people to feel like they belong. She's like, yes. That is your divine flaw. Tragic flaw in literature leads to the downfall of the character. She said, your flaw is perfectionism, overachieving. You nutted it, overworked it. OK, I did that with the book, too. Um, I'm nothing if not an overachiever. Um, but your divinity, is it comes from a place that you care so much. And this is what I figured out in conversation after conversation with leaders. When we talk about what really matters to them, what are your goals in coaching? Well, I'd like to increase my NSAT to 78. And I'm like, <laughs> really? What really matters to you? And when they get to the heart space, instantly the inner critics show up because it's what they care about. That's what I want you to think about. One of the exercises is core values. Look at that critic message on your card. This may or may not work for this. Look at that critic message on your card. Why does that matter to you? Why is it so important? Something's underneath it. Think about that. If anything comes to your mind, jot that down on the card. So divine flaw is one of the ways to do that. The other thing I realize is, um, it's, it's kind of funny, and I, I'm one of those people too, is we tend to know a lot about our inner critic story, what we need to get better at, what we need to improve. I'm pretty familiar with my imposter syndrome messages. We're not very good at knowing our inner success story. What we're great at, our core strengths. And as Jenna said, being able to communicate that. So what I figured out in years of practice of this and practicing, teaching it, um, and I'm a constant learner with you, is it's much more useful to practice your success side what happens is, um, is, does anybody in here do uh, core muscle work? Anyone? It's OK if you don't. I don't either right now. 
<laughs> no inner critics from that one. I used to be able to do a star plank, not in a couple of years. It's all right. It's OK. Um, so why do we do core muscle work? My Pilates instructor had said, you know, the core is lazy. It just lets the arms and legs do the work. To get your core strong, you have to do very specific exercises. Am I right, core muscle people? Right, very specific. Otherwise, they're like, what's up? I'm watching Chicago PD on the TV. Um, and so this, for me, is an analogy about doing your inner work, your inner success work. Because when you don't have good core and somebody comes along and bumps you, you're, it doesn't hold. When you have not done your inner work, your inner core, somebody bumps you, right? When you've done this work, when you've practiced, and, and these are like exercises, which means it might be hard to do, but I'm going to encourage you. When you build that inner core, when you've figured out, and I'm going to show you a list of these, you're solid. When somebody comes along and bumps you, a meeting doesn't go well, somebody says no to your funding, something doesn't come the way you wanted it to, bump. I'm right here. Bump. I don't speak as well as somebody else. Bump. I know my inner core. So how do you do that? One of the ways was the core values. You can look up core values activities on the interweb. They have tons of them. Um, the second one I like to talk about is called Your Stories. What we do in workshops is we have people write down what are two successful moments. Two moments when you feel like you've been very successful and two moments when you feel like you've been very proud of yourself. Not proud of your kids, not proud of your dog, proud of yourself. And you figure out what was it about those things. There are worksheets on this. Um, and it's interesting because we, we're, we don't have access to this. And I did this with a client, um, let's call her Jane, to protect the innocent. And uh, she hired me as a coach. Part of it is she was put in a new role. Um, at a large software company that we're not far from. And um, <laughs> she, <laughs> she was thrown off. She just lost all her confidence in herself. So we're coaching. We do the success and prouds activity. When you've been successful, what are you most proud of? And she started to list it off. And as a great coach, one of my jobs is just to paraphrase what you're saying. I get paid really well just to listen to you and paraphrase what you're saying. Um, and she's like, Essentially, I said, you've been through a horrific divorce, abusive situation. You got out of it, remarried, stepmom, greatest kid in the world, survived cancer. Ten years previously, successful career change to the software business. There are several others. I was like, wow. And she sat back and she's like, I kick it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely you do. She's like, wow. What I'm going through right now is nothing compared to those things. I've done it. But she wasn't familiar with it. This is how we worked her core muscles. We did core values activities, made her write out her stories. I actually also have people stand up and say those things, like Jenna did see you guys. I'm not going to ask that right now. I'm going to ask you to do something else, so be warned. Um, and it's a powerful moment. The other things you can do um, that I recommend are understanding your strengths. And what I talk about with strengths is your energizing strengths. When you're employing them, it just lights you up. Speaking in front of here scares me to death. It lights me up. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> what are your awesome strengths that you know I want you to flip that card over and write them down. One or two. By the way, perfectionists, this means you're amazing at it most of the time, not 100% of the time. <laughs> write down a couple of your amazing strengths. OK. Guess what we're going to do? Pass it around. Pass it around. Ready, set, go. I'm only giving you 60 seconds. Go, go, go. Pass it around, read it. OK, here's the thing. 
the energy felt different, no? Smiling? Feels good to read another woman's strengths? Feels scary to write your own? What? Yes, or another man or another woman's strengths? All inclusive. Fantastic. This is the work you have to do. It's not easy. Jenna said the same thing. It is not easy. You have to do the exercises. So I've got a couple of um, challenges for you. The first one is this. Um, there are a couple other things we could have talked about, but I'm over time. So, and there we go. And there we go. Ginny Rometty, female CEO of IBM, famous for saying growth and comfort do not coexist. Dang it. You are innovators. Is that true, yes or no? Yes. Louder? Yes. You're in a disruptive in industry, yes or no? Yes. You're in a disruptive time where women are becoming more present in tech. True? Yes. Guess what? No imposters there. If you're innovating, nobody's done it before. So you're not a fake. You're the real deal. That's back to that magic. That's the magic. It is, you feel it, you know it, you do the work to build your inner success story, and you show up anyway, just like you did today. There's a ton of success stories in the room already. So here's the challenge to you. Uh, I'm going to skip this, and I'm going to go to this. It won't be easy. But for the rest of today, and there's a cocktail hour coming up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I'm taking these boots off for cocktail hour. I'm going back to flat shoes, right? Um, go out and share a success story or a proud moment or a win you've had with one of your fellow women in this community, even if your imposter says it's not true. Go do it anyway. You're already doing it. So last thing, take that card with your strengths, stand up. Take that card where you wrote your strengths, stand up. On three, you are going to shout one of your strengths. By the way, Rochambeau, I'm going to say one, two, three, shout. So it's not on three, it's, okay, got it? <laughs> this is the Women in Cloud Summit. We're here to accelerate. One, two, three. Thank you very much.